Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, standing outside a house flip that is 99.9% .9 done, and it looks like we're getting it under contract before listing it, which is pretty cool. So we'll talk about that, show you the house, and um, show you a few things we did, including um, putting a little back deck on the house instead of repouring concrete. So we'll talk about the costs on that as well to give you an idea of how to save money, which is always important on these flips. Um, or of course, check out investformore.com. Much more information on rentals, wholesaling, being an agent, flips, all that good stuff. This is a house we bought from Hubzoo, um, which is an online auction, auction um, format, and it was a foreclosure. So this house was vacant for years before we bought it, um, just sitting there. And it was kind of weird because at first, the lot next door was thought to be included with that garage over there, but it was not. It was just the garage was on this land, so there had to be an easement given to that lot to fix it, but we still have a very big lot here. But we ended up buying this property for right around 160000 um, Probably put close to 50000 of work into it, and we sort of have it under contract for 280,000 and we'll have another kind of 20 to 25,000 other costs. Actually maybe less than that because there's no commission in that deal. Um, so probably 20, 15 to 20,000 in other costs on this property. And the people found us because we have that sign in the yard that kind of says we buy houses and they asked if it was for sale, started talking to them and we ended up coming together on a deal. So that was nice to have that happen because it happens quicker and we save a commission because we're not working with a real estate agent. But you can see um, we painted these cabinets. These were the cabinets that were in this house before. Um, new appliances, new counters, and then we still had to uh, find a piece that matched there, which our contractor did do, so that's one of the few things we have left to do. Um, refinish the hardwood, new doors, new paint, new fixtures. Um, this is the house that we did try out a new contractor on and he did a good job, so he's working on some other stuff for us as well. You can see that. On um, some of our other houses, we have not been so lucky. <laughs> We've had a, a number of contractors who we have stopped using, lost, or they quit, or got fired in the last year, I think. Boy, we've had at least three or four people who've been working for us for a while who are doing major jobs who are not working with us anymore. And just recently, um, one of our newer contractors who had been doing a good job, um, we thought things were going well, disappeared and stopped working, stopped responding to texts. Ooh, that's uh, ugly. Need to fix that too. <laughs> and. Um, totally disappeared. Um, so that's just something you have to deal with sometimes. Unfortunately, you know, uh, it's a business where you have a lot of turnover. We had another contractor do that earlier who quit, stopped responding to texts, um, went and call us and disappeared right before coronavirus. And then as soon as the coronavirus happened and all that new unemployment benefits came out, he filed for unemployment, but you do not get unemployment if you quit. Uh, you get unemployment if you're fired or laid off. And you have to be, um, if you're fired for good reason, you also may not get unemployment. So if people are wondering about all of that, you know, you don't just get unemployment automatically if you quit or are fired for good reason. It's kind of a laid off thing where the company doesn't need you or um, they don't have a good reason for firing you. So we've done that with a few people in our office, contractors, and um, very rarely do they ever end up collecting unemployment because we don't just fire people or get rid of them for no reason. Um, there is a reason why we let people go. All right, the basement down here. Uh, we are not finishing it, selling it like it is right now. We did clean it up some, but it was finished at one time. 
how long ago it was, I do not know. Because um, we actually had, or our contractor said, a lady came by last week who used to live in this house like seven or eight years ago, and she said it looked exactly like this back then as well. So when it did flood, I'm assuming it had a flood and that's why they tore everything out. It was like 10 years ago or longer. Um, I did see a toad down here the last time I was here, but I don't see him. He hopped into one of those holes. And then um, another thing we'll talk about real quick is I know uh, the buyers had some concern about the cracks in the foundation. And um, one good rule of thumb that I've always heard, inspectors always told me, concrete guys, if your crack is more than a quarter inch wide, it's something to be worried about. Or if it's offset more than a quarter inch, meaning this side sticks out farther than that side, more than a quarter inch, that's something to be worried about. But something like that, where it's like an eighth of an inch, there's no offset, is kind of a normal stress crack, it happens all the time, it's probably not a big deal. And we see those all the time. In fact, concrete, I mean, it will move. You know, there's some little stress cracks right there. It's just the, the ground moves some, the concrete moves some, that's natural. It's just when you get big movement, like my other foundation house, where there's problems. And a lot of times you'll see them, you know, cut lines in the concrete, or they'll, they'll pour it in squares. That's, so the cracks when they do occur, happen along those seams and not in the middle of a giant slab. So, little lesson. And for people wondering, we did get our soil report back on the other foundation house. We do have that, another little hairline crack there. And um, I'm waiting for the concrete company now to get back to me to tell me what needs done. But we do have that back. They did say we can fix it. I just don't know the cost. And it was um, some kind of piers being installed. Not like the regular ones, but different, I forgot. But there's bedrock 30 feet below the house. They said we need to drill down, drill into the bedrock, and then we should be okay. So we'll see how much that all costs. And I'll do an update when I get that number and that information. Out here, I promise to talk about concrete. All right, <laughs> so that's a pretty major crack, right? Pretty ugly. But we're in the garage and it's not structural. The actual footers and foundation poured for the house and garage is fine, it's flat. The foundation in this house is fine, it's flat. It's just this slab um, has either risen or sunk in spots. You could repour this for probably at least a few thousand dollars or more. However, you're probably not going to get that much money back when you sell it. It's kind of ugly, but it's the garage, and I think most people will think that as well. And you can kind of see the driveway out there is kind of ugly. It doesn't even go all the way to the sidewalk, which is weird. And the neighbor's houses do that as well, if you can see that. You could re-pour that whole driveway for like, I don't know, five to $10,000. But we don't need to. The house will still sell with it like that. Um, just for the fact that most people say, oh yeah, that driveway's kinda ugly. You know, that sucks, but it's not a deal killer. It's not the house that's bad, it's the driveway. And so we're gonna show you out back something that we did to save some money, because we showed this in the last video. Ta-da! We had a concrete pad out here that was really, really cracked. And it's in the before video. I'll link to it. And this one was so bad that we did get a bid. And I think our bid was 5700 to replace that pad, dig it out. You can see under there. Instead, we thought, hey, let's just build a deck over it. So that is what we did. And the deck um, was twenty. 600 half the price more than half the price of repouring the pad and it's looks better than concrete to me so that's one solution to fixing you know bad concrete is build a deck instead <laughs> all right so that is the house like i said we bought it for 160 
from Hubzoo, which means I earned a commission when I bought it as an agent too. I love Hubzoo. They are a horrible company. And because of that, you can get really good deals because they don't market them very well. They don't really know what they're doing. Um, we probably put total 60-ish to $70,000 when you include repairs and other costs. And we sort of have it under contract for 280, still waiting for the document to be signed, but um, supposedly earnest money got dropped off already, just waiting for that to be signed. So if that goes through, everything goes um, as planned. Should be a good flip, should be a good deal. And um, just have to wait and see if that all gets signed. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all the comments, likes, new subscribers. Welcome, we've had a lot of you lately. Great to see you here. And we'll have many more videos coming up on more houses being finished, more progress videos, more rental properties, because I have another rental under contract that I showed on my community page that backs up to a river and is really cool. But we're not buying it till the middle of June. But as soon as I buy it, I'll have a video of that as well. And um, a lot going on. Hope everyone's being safe. We'll be back soon.